dude. Where's my junk? Psych! Hello lovely people, Oreo here. Fighting games, for better or worse, tend to have a number of systems that make performing certain actions more forgiving. And Smash Ultimate is no exception. In fact, it's probably the Paragon. One example of this is the standard buffer system, which allows the player to input their next action up to 9 frames before their current action has finished. A lesser known system has existed since Super Smash Bros. Brawl that allows the player to input a jump for a short time after having run off a ledge and still retain their double jump. Any later than 4 frames after leaving the ledge will result in the character losing their double jump. This is a staple mechanic of many platforming video games, since the game usually moves at such a pace that our monkey brains with their glacial reaction times feel like they're being hard done by if we press the jump button slightly too late after running off a cliff and fall to our deaths. This mechanic is often referred to as Coyote Time, popularised by the recent platforming video game Celeste, in reference to something that I probably cannot mention without being demonetised, just look it up. This is implemented as a universal mechanic for all characters in Smash Ultimate. The player can move off a ledge, and for the first four frames that they are airborne, can input a jump and still retain their aerial double jump. Unlike in previous Smash games, it is not necessary to run off the ledge, and walking also permits a Coyote Jump. Whilst I was aware of this basic mechanic's existence in Smash Ultimate, I have recently noticed a few fascinating implications that, as far as I can tell, have not yet been explored. The most obvious application of a coyote jump is that it allows the player to move a little further horizontally to pursue an opponent with a combo, without risking their double jump. But its usefulness actually extends far beyond this. Since the player character is already airborne, the character does not go through a jump squat for a coyote jump, that is, the usual three frames of startup of a grounded jump. The jump squat is what determines whether the character will short hop or full hop. If the player releases the jump button during the jump squat animation, so they hold the button for three frames or fewer, they will execute a short hop. If the player holds the jump button for any longer than three frames, they will execute a full hop. Since the coyote jump does not have a jump squat animation, there is no distinction between a short hop and a full hop and the character will jump the same height regardless of how long the player holds the input. However, it is still possible to influence the velocity and height of the coyote jump. During any of the airborne frames prior to inputting the jump, any velocity the character builds is essentially vector added to the character's jump velocity. Perhaps most significantly, if the player fast falls and then inputs jump during coyote time, they will jump with a much slower speed and reach a much lower height. This allows the player to connect full damage aerials in some scenarios where they otherwise couldn't. And speaking of aerials, the base height for a coyote jump is the same as the character's full hop height, and since there is no jump squat animation, it is possible to input an aerial immediately after inputting jump. This not only allows you to hit a full hop aerial up to two frames faster than normal, but also at a lower height and with the maximum full hop aerial damage, giving many characters access to powerful confirms that would otherwise be impossible. A disadvantage of the coyote jump is that it does not allow the player to reverse aerial rush, so many characters cannot use it to secure a kill confirm with the typically more powerful back air though there are big exceptions. For example, if Captain Falcon connects a landing up air near the ledge and the opponent dies away, he cannot connect the knee with a short hop or a full hop, even if he jumps on the last grounded frame. However, if he uses a coyote jump, he can connect the knee without even risking the loss of his double jump. Now before my subscribers hit the comments, don't worry, I have found a way to make this all about the only character that matters. So Pikachu's up air bridge combos become significantly more viable when using- <laughs> Just kidding, Pikachu doesn't need advanced techs. It's difficult to specify scenarios for Zero Suit Samus which will benefit from this tech, since much depends on the opponent's DI, but there are a couple of clear examples. One of the big drawbacks from ZSS's neutral air is that it doesn't lead into kill confirms under normal circumstances, after about 80% if the opponent DIs the neutral air away. For example, neutral air to back air will connect if the opponent DIs away below about 80%, but the back air will not KO. Above this percentage, where the back air would KO, the combo no longer connects if the opponent DIs away. 
With Coyote Jump Aerials, however, Zero Suit Samus has a kill confirmed from Neutral Air at this percentage, even if the opponent DIs away. Under normal circumstances, Neutral Air to full hop up air into double jump boost kick would not be possible at the percentages that it will KO. But if ZSS runs off stage after the neutral air, then Coyote jumps, she can input the up air immediately after the start of the jump, catching the opponent low down with the up air, following them upwards, and using her preserved double jump into the boost kick for the KO. I'm sure there are plenty more applications of this tech yet to be found, and I encourage the viewer to experiment. That's all for this video folks. If you like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to contact me at all, you can find me on Discord at Oreo9187 and you can follow me on Twitter at Storbs Oreo. Links in the description. This video was made possible by my patrons. Extra special thanks to my top level patrons, Dusk, Christoph Miller, Roberto Contreras, Simon Vastgum, Demian Draws, Jay Sank, Jean-Christophe Archambeau, Reno Sale, and Wolfgang Keanu Ramsey. If you'd like to join my Patreon family or receive coaching from me, see my Patreon page in the description. Take care, and keep being awesome.